got a heat pump here that was freezing up, so they tell me. Just briefly looking it over here, they've got a low ambient kit. All right, so we've got to come in with our power from the board, also paralleled on with the pressure switch, going through the normally closed contact to the common of the fan. You've got the other side of the fan cycle switch coming through the normally open. So you're feeding power in this way and this way, and the end result capturing it here is the fan motor. So the fan motor is either going to be powered through the pressure switch, basically looping from here down to the switch, back again, through here. This is going to be powered shut when it's called for cooling, which is always energized and cooling. And otherwise, it'll come in the normal closed so that the fan runs in the heat mode. All right, got the probes on there. With these Bryant's carriers, basically there's an orifice in there for you new guys. So when this comes back through, you can't go off of the uh, traditional high side here for your high side pressure when it's running the heat mode because their meeting device is right there. It's a fixed orifice. So you've got to go on your traditional suction line, which is now going to be your high side when you're in uh, heating mode. Then you use your uh, dedicated suction line there for the uh, compressors. This is set for 90 minutes. I will use that on dual fuel systems where they have a gas furnace, but sometimes I use 60, especially where this is going to be uh, all electric. Got our return duct and supply duct checking the temperature. We're running a 101 with a 75 in, so we've got a 26 degree temporized. Now that could potentially include the electric strip elements that are in there. Um, our pressures themselves are right up there by what we were saying they should be at. So far everything's looking pretty good. All right, I shut the unit off and grabbed my booklet. We're gonna double check this out and see uh, see if it's wired up right. Yeah, everything looks like that's set correctly. I did get a picture from the uh, people that are working here and this thing was like four inches of ice on the outdoor coil. So we're gonna put it into a, a defrost to make sure that the defrost is working. Should have done it. Now my freaking meter's downstairs. I need to check that switch. Okay, defrost termination is a normally open switch. I don't feel like walking downstairs and back up again. So, go into our defrost switch, pull it off, short those pins together. Got the official, official jumper on there to make it happen. She is not happening. It's got issues or potentially the reversing valve isn't working. I suppose anything's possible. Reversing valve is right here. We're going to jump R over to O which will put it into cooling mode. Uh-oh. going to get in there and see if it's connected to it. Went ahead and tested the uh, defrost termination switch. It is closed, which is what we need for when it's cold. Went ahead and disconnected the reversing valve straight going down to uh, the solenoid. And I had about 14 and a half, 15 ohms. So I hook it directly to R and common, nothing happens. Check voltage to see if it's there and I don't have it. So I need to go back downstairs and see if I can clone a fuse or what's going on. Just got checking and we've got power to the thermostat R. Here's a Lone Ranger red one going to the outdoor unit and somebody wire nutted it off. So the next question is are we just picking up back voltage is how the outside unit was running without it? I also noticed that the thermostat's still calling and the fan's not running so Got some issues going on there, so we might have to check our G terminal. Calling for G, nothing's happening. Bypass the thermostat. Runs. So we may have a thermostat that's been damaged. Okay, now. Now it works. 
So we're gonna rehook all of our stuff together and it's looking like the thermostat's bad. Um, and then I'm gonna test this defrost board again. Okay, got it back together. Even though the thermostat I believe is calling. The board here's got a built-in delay because these were built back when they didn't have digital thermostats very often. Oh, probably would help if I hook this back up too. There we go. Yeah, that makes a difference. Okay, so that's running. Now we should be able to put it into the test mode. Hopefully. bad defrost board because we know the reversing valve least energizes now don't know if it switches we'll jump this defrost termination switch defrost thermostat whatever you want to call it whatever so it's got that there I see it freezing up already so it should Linux used to just leave it on there and it'd go into it and then come right back out of it or you removed it if it's kicked into it. Well, it tried to do something and it just shut off. And it just came back on. All right, it doesn't want to go into defrost, so we're gonna just jump O to R. And that also tests out that relay. So the relay shut down the fan. So the reversing valve does work. We got us a bad defrost board as we originally thought. That's the only reason why the fan stopped because it's going through the uh, pressure control there. And the pressure control obviously is low right now, at least until it builds enough uh, head pressure here. So it went into defrost after I cycled that uh, reversing valve. All right, basically this thing's shutting off and turning on, shutting off, turning on. Uh, I think your fan downstairs quit running again and it's going off in high pressure. So we're gonna order a new defrost board and new thermostat for it and come back and get that on. But otherwise, uh, equipment wise, it seems to be working good. So it's gonna wrap this one up. All right, we're back to the heat pump with a bad board and bad thermostat. So we've got the new Honeywell thermostat on there. We've got uh, O wired up, Y, G, auxiliary, R in common. We've already went through and set the thermostat up. So what we've done is gone on through, made sure that our R for the thermostat and the outdoor unit's connected together here. Common for outdoor unit and thermostat is here on brown. Auxiliary heat from the thermostat and from the outside unit is on there. You have O, which is a reversing valve from the thermostat to the outside unit. G, which is to your fan for the uh, fan to run when there's a call for heat or cool. Very elementary, but just pointing it out since most of these videos are pretty well situated around the new guys that haven't done it. So went ahead and uh, figured I might as well mention that. What they've done to this also, they've added a freeze stat to this. So they've strapped it to the suction line. They put it in line here and then they broke Y going to the outside unit. Um, so then uh, basically this one here probably could have been staged for two different sets of banks, but uh, it's only 10 kW, so they're just gonna go ahead and run the whole thing at one time. So it's basically one, uh, one bank, or at least that's what they're saying is one bank. Looks like, it's probably a little more than that. Maybe that's what it was originally. You can also see that the uh, transformer here has been replaced. Um, everything else looks fine. So basically uh, our original problem was one of the wires had pulled out from in here and that was not powering our outdoor board. Even when we did wire it back up, it still didn't run anyhow. So we got that done. Then we had a random G terminal here that wasn't wanting to work every time. So to get them by, I wired R to G to get it going. 
and uh, basically today we're back to get this back in. So we got a new thermostat, new outdoor board. Uh, the refrigerant charge was already checked and is fine as far as that and the electric strips and stuff work. So basically uh, I'm going to run it through a quick test here just to make sure that everything's working. I went ahead and went with another Honeywell 8000 series. It was one of the newer ones which is kind of cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this thing into uh, auxiliary heat just to make sure that it's working. Boom, auxiliary heat, crank her up. It should kick right on. Check our amp draw, make sure all of our elements are good. About the time you don't, when you're gonna be coming back. All right, checking uh, that element there. Right in there, 21 amps. Jumping over to this one, 21 amps. All right, that's our total amp draw right there, it's 45 amps. They've doubled these uh, breakers up to feed them both, and they've probably unhooked one uh, element to uh, justify it. So there's obviously a reason why they've done that. You go up and over. Air handler one. Checking the fuses, they're 60s. So that is all you're gonna get out of that. If you're running 20 amps per leg, which really is about 21, you're over, so it's not capable of doing all three. So I'd say that's probably why they unhooked it, and that's why they're running just two. Can't overdo what your wire's rated for. Just tightened up all my lugs there. They tend to loosen up over time, so I always like to make sure they're tight. Basically, everything's coming on now. I got the uh, defrost board replaced. Nice and easy little deal. One screw and it comes out. Got her running. Gonna see if she'll go into defrost this time. There we go, finally. I'm used to the Linux defrost board. It usually kicks right in within seconds. And you just leave it on there. It's gonna run until the termination switch meets, which it's located down there at the bottom. Yeah, this sensor here is just hanging right there with the wiring harness. They don't actually mount theirs on the uh, refrigerant lines like some of the manufacturers I'm used to. So basically, it's in heat pump mode, fans off because the board breaks the power to it. As I've always said in the past, anytime I'm getting into the electrical section, don't do this at home. And so there's your disclaimer. It kicks out of defrost, that's great. So that means she's running good. I've got it set for 90 minutes of accumulative run time and that should be plenty. We've got our wire nuts back on there for that sensor and got them taped just in case so they don't fall off. Everything's gonna be cleaned up here in a second. We're gonna put her back together. All right, I put it back into a defrost again. This time I bypassed the defrost switch because I wanted to see if I open it up, if it terminates immediately, and it does. So the switch is opening up. Instead of sensing it on the coil, they're actually sensing it in the airstream, which is kind of different than what I've ever seen. Um, it's gonna be either time or temperature, generally is how it's always been for any of them that I've ever seen, which means, you know, a maximum of about 10 minutes, which I know my Linux stuff better than I do my carrier. So, I mean, we sold it where I was at before, so um, that's going to wrap this one up. If you guys like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out the link's description down below for links to all my tools I use in my videos. And until next time, catch you on the next one.